Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek as a Construct. And today we are gonna talk about Green Lantern, Beware My Power. Speaking of constructs, uh, this was an animated film that was sent to me by Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. So thank you so much, Warner Brothers Home Entertainment, for sending me a review copy of this. I'm sorry I'm a little late on it with the move and you know procedures and stuff. Everything that I had going on recently, it's just been a lot. And then work on top of it, I couldn't miss too many days of work. So it's been a busy month for me for sure. Uh, so I'm glad I'm finally being able to get to this. And as always, when something good happens to me and I get something passed along like this for free, I give out the digital code. So boom, there you go. First person to go to that website and put that code in will get a free digital copy of Green Lantern, Beware My Power. So enjoy it and then you know skip the review if you have to. Go watch it and come back here and lend me your thoughts and watch my review after you've seen it so I don't spoil anything. Because I will talk about some spoilers since it's been out for like a week or two now. Um, I figured I could probably get into some spoilers and I want to because I feel like the second half of this movie I liked a lot more than the first half. Um, you know, First of all, I want to comment on John Semper, who's the writer of this. For us Venom Vlog fans over on my main show, Venom Vlog, uh, you know, John Semper wrote the three episode Venom storyline for the Spider-Man animated series in the 90s. He's done a lot of great work with Kid and Play. He's done a lot of great animated stuff. I'm a big fan of the guy. Absolutely big fan. And uh, But in this, I feel like the first half of this script was really slow for me, like in a bad way. I was not interested. Uh, they kind of just do a lot of tropey things that I don't really like that when writers do um, to kind of speed through John Stewart and how awesome he is, you know, and I love John Stewart. It's my, that's my favorite Green Lantern. So I was excited to see that they were going to do a story on him and make him the Green Lantern primarily of this new DC shared universe, which I also feel like is really sloppy. Uh, so we'll get into that in a second uh, because that doesn't really pertain to this particular script. It's just the overall concept of what they're doing with these new animated films. So I like the animation style first off. Uh, some people don't seem to like it too much, that Archer style, but I really dig it. Uh, anytime I see one of these trailers with that animation style, I get pumped. It looks pretty cool. Uh, but this story starts off and it's like, okay, here's Jon Stewart in, in Afghanistan. And uh, and he some guy's coming over to stab him. Like he's a sniper, he's killing people. His uh, you know superior officer is down, uh, it been, has been shot. And then he turns around and some guy comes up to stab him, much like uh, how Jordan uh, did, I think, in Vietnam, I think it was, during uh, the uh, uh, the Darwin Cook miniseries that was so good, and I'm blanking on the name of it, um, for, uh, for New Frontier. Uh, so, you know, that kind of started. It's like that, except the blade actually goes through John's hand, leaving a scar. And then it cuts to present day where some guy's coming out of a store and John's just standing there spacing out. And the guy's like, dude, move out of my way. And then John almost breaks his clavicle. <laughs> and you're like, okay. And then John immediately goes into an alley and sees some guys mugging someone and beats them up. And then cops come up and they kind of, they detain him, but then find out he's a soldier and they let him go. It's just like all that, all at once to just kind of get through like, oh, look, he's amazing and he's nice. And he, you know, and yeah, he has a, he has a little bit of an edge because, you know, someone, you know, told him to get out of the way and he, you know, almost beat the guy up. But but then he saved someone right afterwards. And it was just all these things where I'm like, oh, my God, like, you know, and then Ganthet shows up. Uh, I think it was Ganthet who shows up a, a spaceship crash lands and a guardian is there to present the ring to John, which is like, okay, why a guardian? The rings are capable of coming and finding their own hosts. So why was like a guardian there to do it? And we find out later in the story, it's because this guardian was the last surviving guardian uh, when Oa was attacked and, and everyone was killed on Oa. And the ring, you know, they reprogrammed the ring to have something different about it um, than other rings. And then it was, you know, passed on to John, but the ring was how Jordan's ring. And, and so now John Stewart has the ring and he goes to the you know watchtower and comes across Green Arrow, uh, Martian Manhunter and Vixen. And, uh, and they're like, why are you wearing our friend's ring? And they just attack him. Like he shows up and he's like, he's not threatening. He's just like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, intruder. And they all attack him. And I'm like, and then f after they attack him, they go, wait, let's hear what he has to say. And I'm like, it's things like that, like those little tropes where it's like, okay, we have to have a battle scene. And then, so they have one for no reason. And then they realize they're fighting for no reason. And you're just like, well, whatever, man. Like he walked in, he had a coat on, he had the green lantern symbol and he had a ring on, you know, like, why didn't you just talk to him? <laughs> uh, but that also brings me, like I said, to the overall shared universe they're trying to do here. 
The new 52 shared universe, I thought they did really well. In fact, they did it way better than the new 52 comic books uh, because it seemed like they had a, an actual plan for the most part. Uh, this doesn't seem so because they had the Superman movie, Man of Tomorrow, and then they had the World War II movie with Flash and Wonder Woman in the past, and Flash went back in time, but met a different Superman or something, and then came back and tried to recruit the new Superman into a Justice League, and then he turned it down. And then you had the Batman long Halloween stuff. But in this one, the Justice League is already formed and they even say it. They say Batman's not around. He's on some mission. Superman is not here either. And neither is Wonder Woman or Flash. So we just have Vixen, Marshman. And I'm like, I didn't even know these were members on the team. <laughs> like, when when did all these people come together? I think there was a post credit scene in one of the recent movies with Martian Manhunter maybe and Green Arrow. Um, but... I don't know, whatever. It just, it feels discombobulated. I'm like, you know, it, it feels like they're just throwing these in there or they don't want to do, I guess they don't want to retell those stories of like, oh, this is how the Justice League was formed. So they're doing shorthand where it's just skipping around the timeline and you just, you understand that they're all part of one universe maybe. Anyway, it took me out of the movie for a minute and made me go, what, what's happening and why are they attacking them? Um, but once they get into the meat of it, like there's a mystery building and I feel like that's where the, the script actually falls in line uh, for me. Like it kind of focuses in. Uh, you get this story where Jon Stewart's trying to figure out why he has Hal Jordan's ring. And he's also trying to learn how to use the ring. And he's communicating with the ring, uh, you know, uh, setting up little training exercises so he can use it better. Uh, but he also wants to get rid of it. He's like, look, let's just find Hal Jordan and let's give the ring back to him. You know, that's all I want. And so Green Arrow's like, fine, I want that too because Hal's my friend. Even though they haven't set up their friendship in this universe at all so it's kind of like i okay i so you're you're banking on the comic books which i hate when they do that they go well in the comics are best friends so we can just say it in one line of dialogue here and you're just like uh, uh i'm not no i'm not feeling it even though they try to give a little emotion to green arrow he's like i really want to know what happened to my friend they try to do a little bit of it but it's just they go through it too quickly so Green Arrow and Jon Stewart take a ship. They go out to look for Oa. They come across Thanagar and run into Hawkgirl uh, and Ran, and they run into Adam Strange. And so then they bring in those story elements where they, you know, there's a Ran Thanagar war, and someone turned them against each other. And and then the, it brings in, as you've seen in the trailer, which big spoiler, the trailer gives away this whole movie pretty much. Uh, Sinestro is involved in this along with Lisa Drax, his, you know, his right hand Sinestro core lady who reads the Book of the Dead or whatever, Book of Oa um, in the comic books. And then you also have uh, Kanjar Ro and a, I think a Cordian and a couple other uh, villains, Despero I think is in there too. So they just kind of have these villains show up in the third act uh, that you're like, well, if I watch the trailer, I saw those villains already and I knew they were coming. So building the mystery of them being involved felt really silly if you've seen the trailer. <laughs> so if you went in this blind, I guess you know, better for you. But um, but I think most of us probably saw the trailer first and made us want to go see the movie. And then we saw it and we're like, where's Sinestro? Why, why are they taking so long to get Sinestro? And then they with Sinestro, they kind of um, tra Transformers Revenge of the Fallen him, uh, kind of what they did with Megatron. They, they created a master for him that he serves. And I'm kind of like, eh. Mm, I understand the master is who when they reveal who it is and I won't spoil that here um, that part I actually l liked I liked who the actual villain of the story was that I really liked um, the rest like uh, the Sinestro and all that and the mystery and all that I just it was losing me so the first act I didn't like that much at all the second act I thought introduced way too many plot points that they I'm like how are you gonna wrap all this up then they start trying to connect them together, but they do it really conveniently. And I'm like, okay. And then they do the Sinestro thing where he's like, I serve a master. And you're like, oh, okay. And then they reveal the master. And I'm like, oh, okay. I like the master. I like who's actually the villain of this. But to me, I'm like, when I looked at this story, I was like, wow, you could have you you could have kind of cut out the Sinestro stuff. You, you didn't really need it. Uh, you know, um, you could have had someone else play that puppet. You could have had the Rand Thanagar guy, scientist guy, be the puppeteer who serves a master. Like you really didn't need Sinestro in this. And that's what made me upset as a Sinestro fan. So there was just a lot of things in this creatively that were done where I just felt like they kept adding plots. Like we got to get the Adam Strange thing in here and we got to get the Hawkgirl thing in there. And I'm like, I, you, I could see why you thought you needed it, uh, but you really didn't. Cause at the heart of the story, it's where's Hal Jordan and why do I have his ring? Uh, if, if I have his ring, he's probably dead. 
so so what you know what killed him you know what's the mystery and that was would have been great if they just focused on that but then they brought in all these other elements that i really feel like didn't add much to the main story they were trying to tell and that's my only like kind of negative about this movie is that it's very unfocused which is weird coming from john semper because i think he writes a lot of very focused stuff um, and has in the past in animation and everything so i don't know if that was notes you know from you know someone above that was like hey let's squeeze some more characters in here or whatever i don't know why i mean maybe to expand this dc you know shared universe that they're doing now or something but I didn't feel like you needed it. I mean, I love Hawkgirl. Trust me. I'm a big Hawkgirl fan. So it sucks. And I'm a big Sinestro fan. And I like Adam Strange a lot. So to see them in this movie and go, yeah, you kind of probably could have cut them out. I mean, that's not good, in my opinion. Uh, so, so, But I still felt like the second half of the movie was way better than the first half. Because once they revealed who is the villain and they connect that to everything, and they give Green Arrow this big moment that comes straight out of the comic books, too, uh, from Zero Hour. I loved that. I thought that was, I was like, okay, made it all worth it. And that honestly made me go back and forget some of the, the stuff in it that I, I'm critical of, and it made me go, well, this, this arc with Green Arrow, Jon Stewart, and, you know, trying to figure out what happened to Hal and who the villain gets revealed, like, all of that, I thought, was really really well done just not at the beginning when they introduced Jon Stewart but ultimately I liked him as a character and Aldous Hodge who played his voice did pretty good although I feel like and I'm sure this was intentional he played him very somber like there wasn't a ton of emotion out of Jon but I guess that makes sense considering what Jon's been through in the story and kind of his background as a soldier and what he had to do he's kind of like a you know kind of I guess just monotone for the first half of the movie but in the second half as he's like you know what maybe I will keep the ring and maybe I do want to help you know uh get revenge for you know you know what happened to how and figure out what happened to how and all that stuff like I maybe I do want the ring and maybe I need to have the ring uh because of my abilities maybe it chose me for a reason once he gets to that point I like Jon Stewart a lot more but in the first half I'm just kind of like it's just like, oh, here's the thing that makes him cool, and here's the thing that makes him tough, and here's the thing that makes him manly, and it's just like, okay, I get it. I know John Stewart's all those things, but you're you're going through them really quickly and, and kind of I felt haphazardly, but uh, it pay. I think the payoff is good. So the the second half of the story, I think, brings it home at least for me as a Green Lantern fan, and I thought they made some choices in it that I think I know for a fact my friend Gene did not like uh, at all. He liked the first half of the movie and didn't like the second half. But I am the flip of that. I thought the the reveals and stuff worked. And I think they made sense for the story. And I think they answered all those questions you have at the beginning the best way they could. Um, so we can talk about spoilers down below. So if you're watching this, I try to be spoiler free about who the actual villain is. Uh, but we can talk about it down below. So avoid the comment section if you don't want to know uh, who the villain is. But if you do want to know, I'd say go watch this. It's definitely worth a viewing. Um, I thought it was, uh, I thought overall I, I liked it. Um, I would give it probably a three and a half out of five stars. Uh, that's my final rating on it. Uh, but the first half is the reason why I took a, at least one point away. And then not using Sinestro and, and Hawkgirl and, and even Adam Strange. I mean, Adam Strange and Hawkgirl get good moments in it. But again, I feel like that story, it, it, it prolonged the actual story. And I feel like you could have done more with the friendship between Hal and the Justice League and Green Arrow in particular to kind of make the emotional stuff towards the end more emotional. You could have focused more on that if you cut some of these characters out that really didn't need to be there. So um, because you could have made it, you know, you could have picked any planets. You didn't have to do Ran and Thanagar. You could have picked any planets to war with each other where you didn't... Um, you know, take up too much of that time away from the main story. Um, so yeah, those are just creative decisions I didn't personally like, but overall I thought the ending nailed it and brought it home for me. And I thought it gave John a big moment, which I really enjoyed. And same with Green Arrow, who I'm also a big fan of. So for those reasons alone, I think you should watch it and check it out and decide for yourself. And if you do have your own opinions about the movie, whether you agree with me or disagree, let me know down below and we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll have more DC animated stuff coming up very, very soon. Thanks so much. Peace.